not defined by the wounds inflicted upon me by strangers and lovers alike. Rather, I'm defined by what's within, deep and sacred, molded by memories and time. My body has survived winters of cold shoulders and summers of young regrets. Above all, it has survived sly eyes of scrutiny from strangers on the street. In their mind, my body is an act of inherent sin that derives directly from within. In their mind, I'm the embodiment of guilt and shame that should be shunned away. I trace my veins, knowing that underneath this thin veil lays a world known only to myself. They do not feel the words woven into my skin, slut, weak, woman, girl, as if being a female is innately bad, a sign of defeat, of vulnerability, of inferiority that needs the other to be complete. You see, I have scratch marks of anger covering my arm, but they're ephemeral and they disappear to the thin air. But like an old stain, words remain forever haunting the corners of my brain. They stay, unlike people, they stay. These words have sunk in, they've been absorbed by my skin. Sometimes I just want to give in. Sometimes I just want to shrug and mutter, whatever. And sometimes I just want to tear my skin asunder to break free, break free from me and this body. But here's the funny little thing, my friends. These bare arms and legs became soil again. People stomped on the fields of flowers, that is my body, until there was nothing left. I too have pulled weeds without even knowing it. But on one sunny little day, I saw the tiniest glimpse of life, a budding flower amidst the field. You see, I realized that my body is a canvas that encompasses what life brings upon me. It's not up for an art gallery for others to criticize, though they might. The value is not based on how they rate it. Do not seek comfort and solace in their judgment. Do not seek your worth and value in their judgment, for this is your own landscape. With ominous bumps and curves, scratches and scars, these flaws do not detract from your beauty. Rather, they enhance it. For these battle scars make you, you. Remember, paint yourself the way you want to, not how the world does. So that started off a bit intense. That was one of my favorite pieces I have in my immense collection of poems. This is how I cope with the world. Whenever I feel some sort of emotion, it's almost a natural visceral reaction for me to start writing. They flow out of me like a belligerent river. I use words to express myself, and I believe they have a power to convey messages. And my message to you today, consciousness. It's about challenging your consciousness and your conventions. In other words, it's about creating a public discussion, a discourse of sorts, a conversation. Now, consciousness and awareness are powerful tools to empower both men and women alike. Think of it as thin strands of yarn that connects people into one blanket, a blanket of understanding, of compassion, and of humanity. I'm a philanthropist, or I'm no philosopher, and there's not much I can do. But what I can do as a fairly young individual is share this with you. Share a tiny bit of myself in order to generate awareness of challenging body norms and working towards embracing body positivity. We all have the autonomy to do what we want with our bodies, and that is powerful. It belongs to us, and we can do whatever we want with it. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm more than thankful that you're here today, and I hope you hang on to this ride. So in order for me to start this off, I'm going to have to use the F word. And I'm pretty sure that isn't against the rules. So I'm just going to say it out. Feminism. Did you catch that? Feminism. Now, it kills me because there's an immense part of me that is incredibly scared to use the very word. It's a contradiction, really, because here I am talking about feminism. And yet, I feel somewhat uncomfortable using the very word. So when I say spread awareness, that also includes myself. I want to remove the stigma attached to the word, and I'm only here. Let me clarify. Feminism is not a concrete guidebook with clear instructions. Rather, it is deep and complex. It is interactive and it's communicative. It starts to grow by being talked about, by being present in everyone's minds. Now, why do I feel so passionate about this? 
Why do I feel the need to be heard? I need to be heard because voices like mine are raised only to be shot down and crushed and left to rot. I need to be heard because time after time I've been told that my opinion was of no value and that I shouldn't speak up my mind, let alone have a mind. Each and every day I see or hear things like, she's such a slut, she's fat, she's ugly, she this, she that. It's in every corner, every alley, everywhere. And the worst part? The worst part is that I became so used to this, so desensitized what I saw that I became just another pedestrian, a pedestrian who walked on by and witnessed destruction, but ultimately did nothing about it. So I settled with silence. I settled with the idea of not looking, of not being aware. But I'm no longer staying silent. Someone has got to be a part of change. And for me, that starts right here today. But I can't do it alone. I need you to help me out too. And we could all this by simply speaking up by being aware. And that's how you could design connectivity. You're all here today because you made a conscious decision. Now you could be at home eating a cream cheese bagel, or watching a chick flick with your girlfriends, or you could be doing that essay by not really doing it, aka procrastinating. And yet, here you are. For one reason or another, you decide to step in here today with, hopefully, an open mind and an enthusiastic attitude. Our idea to get here was a conscious one, right? Now, how about the bodies that allowed us to get here? Are our bodies a conscious choice? In other words, do we consciously construct how we look, or do we go about our day unaware of our demeanor? I'm pretty sure one way or the other, we all make conscious choices to our bodies, whether that be the way you put your makeup on or the way you groom yourself. Now, how about the things we tend to hide? How about that tiny acne scar? How about that tiny patch of hair? Yes, that's right, body hair. Things are gonna get a bit weird from here. <laughs> <laughs> now look at the screen. What do you see? Okay, be completely honest now. Who in this room has actually seen a grown woman with armpit hair? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so that's like one, two, less than 10. Okay, that's amazing. That actually supports what I'm trying to get at here. We're so used to seeing hair on men, but not hair on women. The one in the photo is Arvino Bistro, an artist that has continually stirred the art world with her dreamlike yet edgy artwork. And she's the reason why I became interested in body positivity in the first place. Now, if you were offended, or if you felt uncomfortable in any sort of way, I want you to ask yourself, why? Why did you feel that emotion, whether it was good or bad? Why was it so visceral? Being challenged by something foreign and then questioning your reaction is an important step towards finding the vitality of body positivity. Now, like I said, we're used to seeing body hair on men, but not body hair on women. Think about it. Have you ever seen a woman with visible body hair on TV? Probably not. And why? Because it doesn't fit the norm. The norm has been shaped by society. We are showered with images of bodies that are extremely hard to achieve. We're showered with messages telling us that we're not good enough if we have a bit of fat, if we have a bit of cellulite. That fat equals bad, skinny equals good. But then again, if you're too skinny, you're told to put some meat on those bones just so you're an underpleasing object for the eyes to devour. Either way, you're going to be told that you're never going to be good enough. In fact, they're going to tell you that your body doesn't belong to you, it belongs to them. I don't want to point out this dichotomy, the dichotomy between them and us, but it does exist and we need to address that if we want to instigate change. Our idea of the ideal body has been perhaps shaped by those around us, and that's why we're so insecure and self-conscious about our bodies. Personally, here I am talking about body positivity, but I still think about my body, and I'm not the only one. Body image is a widespread preoccupation, and one study of college students, 74.4% of the normal weight women stated that they thought about their weight or appearance all the time or frequently. But the women weren't alone. 
The study also found that 46% of the normal weight men surveyed responded the same way. Now, I've struggled, and I still do, but the difference is that I'm aware of how I view my own body, and I'm getting rid of my past demons. From birth up until the age of around 14, I used to be ultra skinny, but then puberty hit me like a train, and then I started to see my weight fluctuate. I also see, started to see my body hair grow in places I've never seen before, alongside with a pool of blood in the toilet that made me think that I was going to die. As my weight changed, people's attitudes towards me started to change as well. It was surprising how easy and how often people said things like, ooh, you're so fat, or ugh, so gross. And people used to joke about how ironic it was that I was a vegetarian, and yet all I had on my body was me. Yeah, I know, that's just right, it's kind of funny. <laughs> but at the time, it left a deep scar on me. But never had I actually thought that they were in the wrong and that I was in the right. I had unconsciously begun to internalize their words. I would feel guilty just for sitting next to someone on the train. And when I no longer fit into my favorite jeans, I felt crushed. I felt as though I failed myself and others for not living up to that standard. The thought that we're only as good as we look stems from childhood. Allow me to explain. We teach girls to internalize guilt, hatred, and shame instead of love, acceptance, and understanding. We teach girls to cross their legs and to be polite. We teach boys to be rough and tough. By doing so, we teach girls to put others before her, to do as others say. Automatically, this renders her to see herself as an object for someone else's gaze. And boys, the way we treat them harms them as well. Boys don't cry. Boys are taught not to exhibit their weakness. They're told to be manly, even before they are men. We teach them that the qualities we bestow upon them are the norm and thus we're making those that do not fit in the spectrum feel out of place. We do not allow these children to feel at home with their bodies until we tell them what it means to be a girl and what it means to be a boy. Already at this stage, we're engineering these children to look at themselves from the outside. Negative thoughts of our bodies are so ingrained in our mind that it's almost impossible to pinpoint just why we feel so insecure about our bodies. We have to be aware that it's not our bodies, that's wrong, not at all. And that's why I emphasize on body positivity through feminism. It realizes that each and every body is special in its own way. It also realizes that a body doesn't necessarily reflect a person's worth or a person's value. And it also reflects that a person's, a man's body hair or the lack thereof or the lack of body hair on a woman, or the existence of body hair on a woman, is totally normal and should be considered weird as in the first place. But I'm not perfect, and I do think about my body. So I started a little project of my own. I stopped shaving. I haven't shaved my arms or my legs since last December. And to be completely honest with you, it doesn't really bother me. At first, it was odd because I never saw my body hair in full bloom, if you will, because I chopped it down like trees the moment they grew on me. The thought of not shaving actually never crossed my mind, and in hindsight, that's kind of screwed up. I thought it was normal and natural, but in reality, I should have questioned just why I felt so compelled to do so in the first place. Now, I know doing this is not going to change the world, and I know it's not going to have an immense impact in society. But I thought, why the hell not? Why not start shaving for me? At least that's the least I could do, right? Now, some women don't shave. Not only is a natural shouldn't be considered weird in the first place, but it's also sort of like a weapon. To me, I personally feel stronger because I know I'm not conforming to societal norms. It's incredibly empowering to think that in my own little way, I'm actually fighting against conventional beauty. To me, my hair is a symbol of rebellion, a symbol of agency and authority over my body. 
I want you to be aware of what, what outer pressure does to you. I want you to be aware of how it affects how you perceive yourself. Be aware that ultimately you are the arbiter of your own body and you can do whatever you want to it, but don't do anything that you feel obliged to do. Do it just for you. I ask of you to be conscious of the words you choose. Be conscious of how you treat your own body as well as how you treat others. Be conscious that you too can create a conversation of equality, of feminism, of body positivity, or simply asking why? Why do we feel this way? Why do we think this way? I hope something ignited a fire in you today, and I hope that fire continues to burn brightly in this room, beyond the walls, and into the world. Thank you.